Hello, hello. So this is my day 10 and I'm doing a medium largest rectangle. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Skyline Real Estate Developers um, is planning to, uh, to demolish a number of old unoccupied buildings and construct a shopping mall in their place. Your task is to find the largest solid area in which the mall can be constructed. There are a number of buildings in a certain two dimensional landscape. Each building has a height given by H uh, index I, where I is, I don't know this notation here, like a big, it's like a little E thing. Um, anyway, so if you join K adjacent buildings, they will form a solid rectangle area. So this is actually something I have already kind of tackled a little bit here. I have to remember how I did it before. <laughs> or maybe it's just very intuitive. You can have all different kinds of peaks. So you need to really keep track of which ones you've already seen. And you should understand that when you are ascending or create, uh, I, sh I should do it from the way you're looking at it. When you're going up, um, you're basically adding those heights to, to a stack. And the second you start falling down, that's when you start calculating those um, rectangles because that's when the that, that height ends effectively. Um, and the way that I've seen it done, I think this is definitely the way I, I, I kind of like doing it because it makes intuitive sense once you think about it, is to have two stacks. So I'm going to have my, so I'm going to have my positions. Am I spelling positions wrong? I definitely am. And heights. And heights is actually H, so maybe I don't need to... No, it is, it's, um, these are not the heights in the order that are given. This is, these are heights that are on the stack. So I don't want to keep those the same. Um, okay, cool. So we'll do a, um, like that. So we'll do while I is less than each other length. And I'll make sure to increment my I because I always forget that. Um, so here we're going to have to do some logic where we say, okay, well, first we say like, if nothing, so when do we add to the stack? So we add to the stack when it's empty. Add if empty, or if the previous, so if the current height is larger than previous on stack, I should say. So that's the only time we add it. If we aren't adding, then we, got, we have to handle um, calculations calculations. Okay, so that looks like this. So I'm gonna say if um, I'll do heights dot length. Heights, uh, heights dot length. Um, or the last one. So we're gonna be actually looking at the last position a lot on, on the stack. So this is uh, top of stack equals last position, last uh, last element item, whatever. Um, okay. Um, so here I'm actually just going to quickly because I'm going to be using this a lot. I'm going to create a quick function here. That's just the uh, get last height peak <laughs> peak the top peak height h for h for height. Uh, this just returns heights. And heights minus heights dot length minus one. Okay, that's all it's gonna do. So here I'm just gonna peak h to see what it is. So peak h and say, hey, if you are less than the current here, um, cur h equals h i. So if the cur h is greater than the previous H, well, guess what? We can just add you to the stack, the position and the peak. And the position matters because we're gonna have to use that to assess the, the width. Uh, so we have to make a calculation on the width and the height. Um, so now we just add everything to the stack. So we have positions dot push, and that's gonna be I, and then heights dot push, and that will be cur H. And that's kind of like the uh, easy situation. Um, I think I'm just going to put continue here just because I don't want to deal with anything else. I don't want to deal with like a big else statement. 
Okay, cool. So handle calculations. So here, so this at this point, then we need to look at what's on the stack. The the current the peak height. So we have the peak h. Wait, I'm spelling peak wrong, aren't I? Yeah, it's that's a different kind of peak. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let me just uh, yoink and yoink. Okay. Peak h. So while peak h is greater than current h, so I think I need to pop something here. So uh, we're gonna deal with do a little let, and we're gonna say let target height equals uh, heights dot pop. By the way, I need to remember at the very end here that I still need to I still need to append the current stuff. I just need to append the right things to those. So I need to like really be mindful of what happens at the end here. So I'm just gonna like comment these out, but I need to know that that's something needs to happen here. Um, okay, so the as long as the peak, so target, I need to do this, so target. So as long as the top is less than my, yeah, I think I need to put the other, the other, the other situation. And actually, I think I will put an else situation here because this is um, something I'm trying to be mindful of where I need to put else if. Okay, actually, else if. Because uh, so the situation of the height being equal is actually something I can I can ignore because the positions will still keep the width relative to each other. So I don't I don't need to keep track of any lengths that are the same. I'm sorry, any heights that are the same. Um, it's it can effectively be ignored. So that's why I'm going to say if here. So if, and I'm just going to kind of reverse the situation. If cur is, the current height is less than the top, the last height, then we can start doing our calculations. We say, hey, while current height is less than the peak, look at our target. Oh, this is me doing that here. Okay. Yeah, I think I could do target. So target H pop it off and now we say hey I need my target okay cool so the idea is while the current so the current height is like three you want to so imagine having like a height of five and a height of three here and a height of four and so you would want to go and again I'm like look at get it from your perspective five three on the right and then four on the left then your current one where you start dipping you start going down that's like your threshold for where you want to back up until you see another one of those uh, and when you do then you can continue going once you see another three or less then you can just keep going uh, and adding to the stack but until then you you pop off the stack okay so we need to add a little bit of logic here so we're popping stuff off so we need to be mindful that the the length matters so heights dot length. So we need to actually have stuff to pop off, basically. For reasons I will explain in a little bit, we actually will want to keep some of the information from within this loop. So I'm going to uh, declare some variables out here. So temp h and temp position. Temp h and temp p for position. Um, temp h equals, and we pop off from the heights. So heights dot pop and temp p positions dot pop. And here's where we would do our calculation. So our current i is effectively the starting point. So that's something to keep in mind. So uh, again, we have like five and three and four here. If we pop off the five, then the i -th um, will be one more than where that five was because we record that position at positions. Um, so the positions for that height is one less than the current position and five, five having a four next to it, you will actually just get, have five times the difference of one. So that's how you would get the, the height there. So you're taking the position of the current index times the height of whatever you get. So the five will be one times five. You go to the four, it's be four times two. And then you get down to the next thing and maybe that's a three or a two or whatever. Uh, and then you actually don't need to do any calculations at that point because it's the same height as the current position. So I need a set of max here. 
max equals negative one because we can't have negative areas, so uh, negative one will mean that there is nothing to re return. Um, and here we'll set area. <laughs> I'm trying to think like, what am I thinking about? Const area equals math d uh, dot. Well, actually, I can do a little um, shenanigans. So max equals math dot max, and then take the current max, and then just do the, the calculation for the area here. Uh, so the area in here would be. Uh, I think I mentioned it, which is the current I minus the temp position. And then I do that times the temp H. That will give you the area that you're in. And here is where, uh, so once you're done with that, you eventually pop off until the length is gone or um, the, the heights has been diminished to the point that you're currently at the same or lower height than your current index. So once you're at that area, the thing to keep in mind is up until that that point, so then, then you can actually add the current information, right? But the thing is, that lower number is still within those higher heights, the higher bars that you saw previously. So the last position that you popped off is actually where that three or whatever the index, you know, that number here, the height, that's where that height actually starts off effectively. So that's what we're actually going to have to keep in, in memory, not the current I, but the last position that we popped off. And when we keep that, then that's basically saying like, Hey, this three actually started all, out all the way over here. And the next time we see it, we know that with the distance I need to calculate, the width I need to calculate, isn't from that position, it's from the position that the three effectively started at. Here's the thing, once you're out of this while loop, you have looped through each element once, and you've done some um, handling of heights here and there, but you technically could actually have some remaining um, things on your stack. So you need to actually handle those remaining And it looks very similar to the logic that we already have up here. So I'm just going to copy it for now. A little bit slightly different though, because the thing we care about, um, and I think at the end I need to return max. Let me just, um, so there's, there's nothing to push because we're at the very end. Um, I'm going to return max. And we are not caring about this. We don't have a current height. We're just popping things off as long as height has a length. We're just going to keep popping it off um, here and here, right? So the thing to keep in mind here is at this point, because we got to the very end, there is no, so there, there are some variables here that don't make sense. And that's definitely this I here. So this I, there is no I. We're not looping inside of the list anymore. We are at the end of the list. So that's the, the, the thing we need to keep in mind here. This I is no longer an I. It's the the total list length, effectively. So it's h dot length here. Because when you get, when you get to the very end of the the buildings heights, then that is the starting point for from everything from that point this way. So you have to calculate, you know, starting from the very end effectively. So that is your eye. Um, and you do that, you just keep popping them off until you don't have anything else to, um, to add on to, to, um, to assess. And that should take care of situations where any remaining heights are larger. Uh, it'll take this times, um, yeah, the position, the last position, which is itself, or any situations where there's a higher height on this side, the lower height will still go from here all the way to the end. Yes, because it keeps, because of this lot, the logic here, this is like very key logic here. Key. <laughs> um, it, it will maintain the last position that it started at. Okay, so let's run this, let's see what happens. Oh god. <laughs> Runtime errors. Okay. Temp H is not defined on line 59. 59, yes, you're absolutely right. So this is. Uh, well, I don't need it to be. Um, I could just say const here, it's fine. Um, I don't need that to be within the global space, so that should be okay. Hey, Eureka. Uh, sweet cake. And let's submit some code. 
Very cool. Yeah, that's definitely a tricky one, and I, I, I've seen it before. I've spent some time on it before, and to get this, re the rationale is. It took a while for me to like, put like get it down, but I think I have it down pretty well at this point. The trickiest part is definitely this like, situation is kind of a little bit messy here, um, and a little bit of this one. But like once you once you understand the stuff up here, it's like oh yeah, this is. I just need to like replace the, um, variables with the appropriate, uh, other variables here. Um, anyway, hope that was helpful and useful. This is definitely a good coding. I, I like this. I like this uh, coding challenge. It's very um, engaging for me. Uh, anyway, I will see you next time.